I'd like to say good evening to everyone and welcome you to this week's Bible study. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, the hour has come for you to speak and for us to learn. So Father, use this vessel any way you see fit. Anoint me from on high with your knowledge, Father, that whatever's on your mind will proceed out of my mouth, and your word will not return to you void. Continue to look after our sick and shut in. Uh, Father, continue to bless those and comfort those who have lost loved ones. And Father, if you would just come right now and teach an uncompromising word, I will be so very careful that I make sure I give you all the glory, praise, and the honor. In the name of Jesus, I pray this, Father. Amen. Good evening once again, uh, everyone out there, my brothers and sisters. want to welcome you to another uh, Bible study. And as I was telling you the previous weeks, we're going to be talking about people in the Bible for the next several months. Uh, you're going to be learning some, some interesting things about people in the Bible that you did not know. And uh, the one particular person we've been talking about for the last four or five weeks has been Joseph, the son of Jacob. And today, our reference scriptures will be coming from the book of Genesis, chapter 41, verses 33. And then we're going to skip down to verses 38, 43. And then, uh, after which, we will go ahead and be going back into the book of Jasher. I think we're going to be in chapter 49 today. And uh, we're in part 6 today. The story of Joseph, part 6. And for a subtitle for this part... We're going to use this subtitle, God Delivers Joseph. God Delivers Joseph. Now, you're probably wondering, why are you using that as a title? You have to go all the way back uh, to part one, when Joseph revealed that uh, God had given him some dreams and also showed him how to interpret them, and he was mistreated by his brothers who were so jealous after he interpreted the dream, they threw him down a dark pit. Uh, they sold him into slavery where he was beaten by the Ishmaelites. Then he was sold to a man in Potiphar in Egypt. And he was doing good for a while. And then Potiphar's wife pursued him and he rejected her. She lied and said he tried to rape her. And then they threw him in a dungeon. Now all the time this was going on, God was with Joseph. Whether you know this or not, brothers and sisters, no matter what you're going through, if you have a relationship with the Lord, yeah, you're going to have trials and tribulations, but God will be right there with you. And today we're going to talk about God delivers Joseph. And I just want to, in these scriptures, you're going to see the remarkable things God can do for you if you continue to hold on to his unchanging hand. Amen. So let's go ahead and talk about our subtitle today, God Delivers Joseph, The Story of Joseph, Part 6. And I will go ahead and read our reference scriptures, and then we will get into our lesson. I'm going to be reading Genesis chapter 41, verses 33, and then I'm going to skip down to verses 38 to 43, and I will be using the King James Version translation. Amen? Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such as one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God had showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vesture of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Amen. Now we're going to go ahead and get into our lesson, but may God bless the reading and hearing and the doing of his holy word. You know, in our last lesson, we saw where Pharaoh had two dreams that troubled him so bad that he gathered all of his magicians and his wise men together to give him a clear meaning of what these dreams meant. After several failed attempts 
trying to interpret his dream, because most of them were speaking off the top of their head. Let me correct myself. All of them were speaking off the top of their heads because these dreams came from God. Pharaoh then ordered his guards to kill all of them. Now, Merai, the chief butler, he remembered Joseph, who was still in prison in Potiphar's dungeon, and he told Pharaoh about Joseph's gift to interpret dreams. Pharaoh summoned Joseph to his throne, and after hearing about Pharaoh's dreams, God, I'm going to say that again, God gave Joseph the ability to properly translate his dream, and to prove to Pharaoh that the interpretation was true, Joseph told Pharaoh that his firstborn would pass away right after his queen had given birth to his second child. Now, after the passing of Pharaoh's firstborn son, he called a special meeting with all of his leaders and said, You have all heard the words of the Hebrew man foretelling of the coming events of Egypt. And after the passing of my son, I have no doubt, no doubt, that everything that he said is surely going to happen. So we must form a council and follow his lead on what we must do next to protect ourselves from this famine that is surely going to come our way. So let us find someone among us that is truly wise enough to do the things that this man said would protect us from this famine. So find you someone this day and put him in, the, and put him in charge over the affairs of Egypt. The officers all replied, and they probably replied this way, no, not one of them wanted to have that pressure because they had already messed up once and been threatened to have their lives taken away. Listen to this reply from all of his officers. Oh no, O oh king, surely that should be your decision. And whatever you decide, we will obey the order. Pharaoh then said, Since God has given this Hebrew man the knowledge to interpret dreams, I feel like he should be the one that we should trust to save our land. Now look at the officers now. Then all the officers replied, But surely it is written in the laws of Egypt, and it should not be violated, that no man shall reign over Egypt, nor be the second to the king, but one who has knowledge in all the languages of the sons of men. So Pharaoh, our king, this Hebrew man that you are suggesting can only speak in his language. So how can he be over us when he doesn't even speak our language? So here is what we suggest, O king. Bring him before all of us and prove to us that he is worthy of this title. And if he passes the test, then Pharaoh should do as he sees fit. Pharaoh replied back to his servants, It shall be done tomorrow, because I am in total agreement with everything that you all have said. Now on the very same night, same, the same night, the Lord sent one of his angels, and the angel came into the land of Egypt to see Joseph. Now Joseph was still in Potiphar's dungeon, asleep in his bed, because he was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. Now, while Joseph was asleep in his bed, the angel appeared and stood over Joseph and woke him from his sleep. Joseph stood up on his feet, and right across from him stood this angel who was sent by the Lord. And the angel of the Lord spoke with Joseph and taught him all the languages of man in that night, and he, and he called his name Jehoshaphat. And when the angel left, Joseph thought on these things and went back to sleep. Now the very next morning, the king summoned all of his leaders. And after their arrival, watch what the king does. The king climbed all 77 steps, the same steps which represented different languages with each step. After he had reached the top of the stairs, 
he sat down upon his throne. The king then ordered that Joseph be brought before him, and the servants went and brought Joseph to Pharaoh. Now watch the miracles of God. Watch God's mighty power. Watch how God delivers Joseph. As Joseph came into the room, he proceeded to climb the stairs to Pharaoh's throne. And with each step, Joseph spoke in a different language. Praise God. And he did not cease speaking in various languages until he had reached the 70 seventh step, and was now standing right in front of Pharaoh. And the king greatly rejoiced on account of Joseph, and all the king's officers greatly rejoiced with the king when they heard all the words of Joseph. After everyone had witnessed this amazing proof, Pharaoh spoke to Joseph and said, You told me to appoint someone who was very wise over the land of Egypt in order to save this land from famine. Since God has saw fit to give you all of this wisdom, and I know for a fact that everything you have said has come true, there is no other man in all of Egypt like you. Your name no longer shall be called Joseph, but from this day on your name will be called Zephnat Paneah, you will be my second throughout all of Egypt, and you will be in control of all of Egypt's governmental affairs. You will handle the payrolls of all the servants, and the people will all bow down to you when you appear. The only one who will be greater than you in all of Egypt will be me myself. Pharaoh then took off his ring, a sign to show everybody he was serious about this. Pharaoh then took off his ring and placed it upon Joseph's hand. And he dressed Joseph in royal garments. He placed a golden crown upon his head and he put a golden chain around Joseph's neck. The servants placed Joseph in the king's second chariot. And Joseph sat up on a strong horse that was given to him by the king to ride alongside his. And they paraded Joseph down the streets with a huge celebration with lots of music and lots of dancing. Joseph had 5,000 men marching in front of him and 20,000 soldiers were on the left of him with women dancing in the street and playing music. And the king's people went before him spreading perfume in the streets and 20 men making proclamation with a loud voice saying, do you see this man whom the king has chosen to be his second? From now on, all of the affairs in Egypt must go through him. Anyone giving him any trouble or hard time will be put to death. After the people heard this proclamation, they all bowed down to Joseph and then they started Rejoicing with music and dancing once again. As Joseph sat upon the horse, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and called out and said, He raised the poor man from dust. He lifted up the needy from the dunghill. O Lord of hosts, happy is the man who trusted in thee. Joseph did not forget where he came from. Joseph knew that God was with him throughout his whole ordeal. So he had to pause, reflect, and give praise to, who, to whom praise was due. Sometimes God will do things for us, and we'll go on about our business like God ain't done anything. But anyone out there, you know in your heart, that last thing that happened to you should have took you out. But by the grace of God, you still here. You need to get on your knees and praise him and give him thanks, just like Joseph did. And on that same day, Pharaoh gave Joseph servants, silver and gold, and fields and vineyards, and various other gifts. On the next day, 
Pharaoh commanded the people to bring gifts to Joseph also. Hey, if I can give him something, y'all going to give him something too. And they built a high place in the street and spread out garments for the gifts. And once again, it was said, whosoever does not bring a gift to Joseph will be put to death. After all of the gifts were gathered up, Joseph had them placed, look at here, in his own private treasury. This man went from the outhouse to the big house. And Pharaoh chose a wife for Joseph. Now don't get it twisted, y'all. Back in them days, you didn't have no choice. They picked your mate. They picked your husband, and they picked your wife. So Joseph wasn't going to argue with Pharaoh. And Pharaoh chose a wife for Joseph, whose name was Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, who was the priest of On. She was a very beautiful girl who was a virgin. And the king said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and beside thee none shall dare to lift up his hand or his foot to regulate my people throughout the land of Egypt. If anybody try to start an uprising and try to remove you for, from your position, they're going to have to deal with me. Now Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, and he left the king's palace to start his duties as his second in command. You know, you got to move out when you get grown. And you just can't keep staying there. Joseph knew this. The king, look, I'm 30 years old, man. I ain't, let me go out and do my job. I ain't got no business still living in the palace. Let me go out in the world and find my own way. And the king gave Joseph a hundred servants to assist him in his new home. Joseph purchased many other servants and they remained in the house of Joseph. Joseph then built for himself a very magnificent house, like unto the houses of kings, before the court of the king's palace. He made his house almost across the street from the king. And he made in the house a large temple, a very elegant in appearance and convenient for his residence. The way the, uh, 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 Jashar is describing is this was a beautiful palace. It took Joseph, watch this, three years to build this beautiful structure. And Joseph made unto himself a very elegant throne, look here, with an abundance of gold and silver, and he covered it with onyx stone and bedellium, and he made upon it the likeness of the whole land of Egypt and the likeness of the river of Egypt. Joseph sat securely upon his throne, in his house. And the Lord, watch this, increased Joseph's wisdom. And all the inhabitants of Egypt and Pharaoh's servants and his princes loved Joseph exceedingly. For this thing was from the Lord to Joseph. The story of Joseph, part six, God delivers Joseph. And if there's anyone out there that does not know Jesus and the pardon of your sins, I encourage you today, my brothers and sisters, get to know Jesus Christ. There is not a better friend in all the world than Jesus. And once you get to know Jesus and you, get, and you become born again, repent of your sins and get baptized in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. And once you've done all of that, get in the will of God and find out what his plan is for your life. And until we meet again, my brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter what you're going through, no matter your circumstance, you can always, always, always trust in the Lord. God bless each and every one of y'all, and please, please stay safe. God bless you.